Hello, this is Mr. Millings, and today I want to explain how to calculate changes in a substance's thermal energy when there is also a change in state of matter. So let's jump into a problem and take a look. In this problem here, it says how much thermal energy must 10 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius absorb in order to raise its temperature to 110 degrees Celsius. So when we're working with this type of problem, where we're asked to calculate changes in a substance's thermal energy, when there is also a change in state of matter, what I like to do is just kind of make a little picture and then uh, just kind of uh, detail what's going on in this little picture. Okay, so in this picture here, or in this problem here, it says that we've got 10 grams of ice. And this ice is at a starting temperature of negative 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, and what's going to end up happening is that this ice is going to absorb some thermal energy or heat from its surroundings. And we want to know how much thermal energy this ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius will need to absorb in order to change its temperature to 110 degrees Celsius. The mass is going to stay the same, so we will have 10 grams of water vapor at 110 degrees Celsius. So let's think about this, people. If you've got 10 grams of ice, at negative 10 degrees Celsius and it absorbs thermal energy from its surroundings then its temperature over time is going to increase it's going to begin to get warmer and at zero degrees Celsius this ice here is going to melt okay the melting point or freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius okay so now we're gonna have liquid water over here and this water is going to continue to heat up so its temperature is going to increase over time until it reaches 100 degrees Celsius at which point this water is going to begin to boil or evaporate and turn into water vapor okay this water vapor is now going to continue to absorb thermal energy so its temperature is going to increase from 100 to 110 degrees Celsius and what we want to know is how much thermal energy is involved with raising 10 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius to water vapor at 110 degrees Celsius. So let's jump into this problem and solve it. Okay, to solve this problem here, we need to break it up into five little pieces. And the first step, what we're going to do is we are going to calculate the amount of thermal energy it will take to raise the temperature of 10 grams of ice from negative 10 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. After that, in the second step, we will then need to calculate the amount of energy it will take to melt 10 grams of ice. So we will have to calculate the heat of fusion. In the third step, what we will need to do is we will need to figure out how much thermal energy this water must absorb in order to raise its temperature from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. In the fourth step, what we will need to do is we will then need to calculate how much thermal energy this water will need to absorb in order to change it into water vapor. So we will have to calculate the heat of vaporization for 10 grams of water. In the fifth step, what we will need to do is we will need to calculate how much thermal energy this 10 grams of water vapor will need to absorb in order to raise its temperature from 100 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. So let's jump right in and solve this. First thing we need to do is start with step one. And in step one, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of thermal energy this 10 grams of ice will need to absorb in order to raise its temperature from negative 10 to zero degrees Celsius. And the way we do that is by using the thermal energy equation. Q equals MC delta T, or Q equals M cat. So the mass of this water here is 10 grams times the specific heat of ice tells you right here is 2.03 joules per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature as this ice goes from negative 10 to 0 degrees Celsius that will be 10 degrees Celsius put this in our calculator and we end up with 203 joules. This is not our final answer. This is just the amount of energy this ice 
at negative 10 degrees Celsius will need to absorb to raise its temperature to zero degrees Celsius. Now what we need to do is at zero degrees Celsius, this ice is going to melt. So we need to calculate the heat of fusion here for 10 grams of ice. So in the second step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate the heat of fusion for this ice. So we've got 10 grams of ice. And if you take a look at the heat of fusion for ice, it will take 334 joules of energy for every one gram of ice to melt. Put this in our calculator and I end up with 3,340 joules. So it will take 3,340 joules of energy to melt this ice. And the next step, what we need to do is figure out how much thermal energy this water will now need to absorb to raise its temperature from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. So here we go. In step three, we will again have to use the thermal energy equation. All right, so we've got 10 grams of water now. I'll do it down here. Times the specific heat of water, which is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius, times the change in temperature as we go from zero degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. That's 100 degrees Celsius temperature change. Put this in my calculator, and I will end up with 4,180 joules. So it's going to take 4,180 joules to heat this water up from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. And the fourth step, what we now need to do, is calculate how much thermal energy it's going to take to boil this water, this 10 grams of water. So we will have to calculate the heat of vaporization. I'm running out of room here, but I think we should be able to make this all fit. Okay, so we now need to calculate the heat of vaporization. We got 10 grams of this water, and the heat of vaporization for water is 2,260 joules for every gram. put this in our calculator and we end up with 22,600 joules. So this is the amount of thermal energy that this water will need to absorb just to convert it into water vapor. In our fifth step, what we will need to do is figure out how much thermal energy this water vapor will need to absorb to go from 100 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. So we will need to use the MCAT formula once again. The mass of this water vapor is still 10 grams. That does not change throughout the problem. Times the specific heat this time of water vapor, which is 2.0 joules per gram degree Celsius times the change in temperature. As this goes from 100 to 110 degrees Celsius, the change in temperature will be 10 degrees Celsius. So now I put this in my calculator and I get 200 joules. So to recap here, we calculated the amount of thermal energy it will take to raise the temperature of 10 grams of ice from negative 10 to zero degrees Celsius that's right here. We then calculated the amount of thermal energy it will take to melt 10 grams of ice or the heat of fusion. That's right here. We then calculated the amount of thermal energy this 10 grams of water will need to absorb to go from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius. Our answer is right here. In step 4 we calculated the amount of thermal energy this water will need to absorb to convert it into water vapor or the heat of vaporization, 22,600 joules. And in step five, 
we determined the amount of thermal energy that this 10 grams of water vapor will now need to absorb to change its temperature from 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. So now that we have these five values, all we need to do is add up these five values and that should be the total amount of thermal energy this ice will need to absorb to raise its temperature to 110 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I've added up these five numbers here and it comes out to be 30,523. So the amount of thermal energy, the total amount of thermal energy that this ice must absorb to raise its temperature to 110 degrees Celsius is 30,523 joules of thermal energy. Keep in mind that the sign of our Q value here is going to be positive because the ice is absorbing thermal energy. Okay? If this process were to be reversed and you started off with 110, I'm sorry, if you started off with 10 grams of water vapor at 110 degrees Celsius and you were trying to cool it down to negative 10 degrees Celsius, we would have the exact same answer except that our sign would be negative. This water vapor would have to release 30,523 joules of thermal energy. Now if you want to put this in kilojoules, you can quite simply do that. Let me make this more clear here. If you want to put this in kilojoules, not a problem. Just slide this decimal over three times and you will get your answer. So our final answer to this problem, how much thermal energy must 10 grams of ice at negative 10 degrees Celsius absorb? to turn it into water vapor at 110 degrees Celsius, this ice is going to need to absorb 30,523 joules or 30.5 kilojoules. I hope you found this helpful.